Hey guys, I'm here today to share with you a project that my first grade students just wrapped up. We are calling them our mad scientist works of art. So this was a great project because it allowed us to explore different media, watercolor, chalk, it allowed us to really focus on how colors mix together. That's what's happening here in these beakers that we learned how to draw. We learned how to create three-dimensional forms, even though we're working on a flat surface, creating an awesome optical illusion. And we did that also by drawing these forms for the beakers. We learned how to take a flat sheet of paper and really make it look three-dimensional. This project was a whole lot of fun. It even involved an additional science experiment. I thought I'd walk you through the steps today in case you want to share it with your students. Let's talk about how to draw something called forms. Forms are a part of the seven elements of art, which are line, shape, color, value, form, texture, and space. Now, shape is an element of art, but a shape is something that is flat. For example, this is a flat circle. It's got two dimensions, height and width, but it's flat, so it's considered a shape. A form is fat. A form has three things, height and width, just like the shape, but it also has something called depth. Now, this is considered a form because a shape is flat, a form is fat. Now, what we're going to do is create an optical illusion. Optical means eye, and illusion is another word for magic. We want to take a flat sheet of paper, but create the illusion that something is popping out. So we want to take something that's flat, like a shape, but make it look as if it's popping out like a form. So what we're going to use is a sheet of paper. And my sheet of paper has been divided into three sections just by folding. And I'm using a Sharpie. And we're going to start in the middle section first. And what I'm going to do is create a cylinder. And I want to create the illusion that it's popping out of space. So what I'm going to do is make a dot for the width two dots to decide the width of my cylinder. So I think I'll put a dot here and then maybe a dot here and this will show the width of my cylinder. Now my cylinder comes toward you and it does not make a straight horizontal line but it curves toward you. So to draw that I'll start at one dot and I will curve toward you and then go back to the other dot. Now my cylinder goes back into space, and this time my curve goes back into space. Now you all know this as an oval. However, if you turn a cylinder this way, it's actually a circle. But because of our point of view, we're looking at it like this. So that's why it appears to be an oval. Now we need to determine how tall the height of our cylinder. And I'm not going to go all the way down to the bottom of my paper because I need to draw a line to go across. Now you might think you would draw a perfectly horizontal line, but if you do that, it will flatten your cylinder. Look at the cylinder. It's actually a curved line, a repeat of this one right here. There we go. Now if this is a science experiment bottle or a glass or a beaker, then it's probably made out of glass, which means it's transparent or see-through. That's different than this guy. You can't see through this cylinder. That means it's opaque. I'm also going to maybe add some lines because in science, you're usually doing a lot of measuring. Sometimes the lines are short and long. I could be creating a pattern like that. I could even number my cylinder if I wanted to. If I number it though, this might be interesting to you. You start your numbers at the bottom. You don't start at the top. And if I wanted to, I could even add halves inside there, but I think I'm just going to leave it and move on to my next one. Oh, I'm forgetting something. I need to put the liquid inside my cylinder. So to do that, I'm just going to repeat this oval shape. I could repeat it up here. I could repeat it down there. Maybe I'll repeat it right here. 
I can draw right through my number and there's the liquid inside my container. Now I'm ready to make another one. This one I think I'll make a little different. First I have to determine the width of my cylinder with my two dots. I'm going to have that line that comes toward you and one that goes back into space. For this speaker I'm going to make it have a long neck so my vertical lines are going down. Maybe I can use diagonal lines to have my beaker coming towards you. And just like the cylinder, I have to make a curved line that comes out and a curved line that goes back. I think for this one, I'll have my liquid right here. Maybe I'll just have the lines for measuring along that long part of my cylinder. I don't have to number them if I don't want to. Now that you know how to make these different shapes, maybe we can make one that's a little bit different. So this one is a medium width coming towards you, going away, vertical, vertical. Maybe this one is rounded. So instead of using a diagonal, I use a curved line coming towards you. It's glass, transparent, maybe some measuring lines. Don't forget your liquid. All right, now that you have three bottles for your science experiment, let's move on to the experiment part. For this, I'm gonna use watercolor paint and I'm gonna use a special technique called wet on wet. Right now my paper's dry and I want there to be a liquid in here. So I'm going to make my paper wet and I'm just putting water on my brush and I'm just putting water inside where I want liquid. I know you can't see anything. That's because the water is transparent. So I'm just putting a little bit of water in here to make my paper wet. And I think I'm going to make the secondary color green. I need blue. I could use turquoise or blue and I'm twirling around my paintbrush ballerina. Look at her twirling. She's not scratching or scooting around on her bottom. And then I'm just going to put some dots. And you might notice that the dots are growing. The reason that is is because the paper is wet. My paintbrush is wet. When wet on wet comes together, the colors start to move. So now that I've got some blue or turquoise dots in my science experiment beaker, I'm going to clean my brush, dry my brush, and I'm going to get a little bit of yellow because I'm trying to make green. I know that yellow and blue might make green. And I'm just adding my yellow dots. I'm not going to mix it because if I give the paint enough time to spread out, some of the yellow and blue might meet together and create some green. All right, so that science experiment bottle's done. I'm gonna let that beaker sit there and do its magic. And now I'm gonna move on to this one. So again, my first step, because I'm doing wet on wet, is just to add water. Once that's done, I think I'm gonna make orange. So I know I need red, the primary color red. And I'm just gonna tap, oh wow. That one's really spreading out. That's so cool. All right, I think that's enough red. And so I'm going to add yellow. Just like I did before. Oh, look, it's already happening. It's already spreading out and meeting. In fact, I can see green starting to happen here. See, sometimes experiments happen fast and sometimes they move slowly. Oh, it looks like right here I didn't get enough water, so that's why it's not spreading out. That's called wet on dry. All right, last one. I wonder if you know what color I'm going to make. Oops, I almost forgot an important step. Add water first. Okay. Whoa, I got a lot of water in there. That's really spreading out. And I'm going to make purple. So I know that I need red to clean my brush and add some red. And that's all there is to it. Ooh, that is so cool. All right, kids, let's move on.
Now, while that's drying, let's make some three-dimensional spheres that are going to be completely transparent. Those will be our bubbles. So what I'm going to do is just trace a bunch of circles for my bubbles. We were looking at bubbles, and when we saw the bubbles, we noticed that some were different sizes. We noticed that they caught the reflections from the light in around the room. We also noticed that sometimes the bubbles overlapped each other or they were stuck together. And we saw that the bubbles were see-through or transparent. So let's start by using a white color pencil and just tracing a bunch of bubbles. When you have some bubbles, then you're going to use chalk. Start with a white piece of chalk and just color on your pencil line. And once you've got that colored in, take a finger and you're not rubbing across the whole thing. You're just kind of massaging the circle. You want to make that white line that's opaque that you can't see through a little bit see-through or translucent. That's a new one. That means something that you can kind of see through, like fog, but it's not completely clear like glass. All right, so that's finished. Now comes the fun part. Pick out a couple of pieces of chalk of colors that you really like. Light colors work great. And we want this to look like it's popping out. So to do that, we have to use a curved line. And notice I'm doing it along the edge, and then I just massage one line at a time. Here's another curved line along the edge. Massage one line at a time. <gasps> Maybe a little bit. The reason I'm only doing one line at a time is because I don't want to accidentally mix all of the colors together. I want the colors to stay nice and bright. And the last thing I like to do is just add a little reflection. <gasps> now, if you wanted to, maybe some of your bubbles have popped. I just do that with a little line. Some lines coming away from it. It helps to look at bubbles to just see what those bubbles might actually do. There we go, there's a popped bubble. Piece of once you've finished your bottles and the paint is dry and you've got all of your bubbles, now the fun begins of cutting out your shapes and gluing them down. But you want to think before you start gluing things down, where do you want to place things? That's called thinking about your composition, where things are placed in your artwork. You need to think about things like balance and interest. And as you're gluing things down, remember when you glue it, you don't want to rub the top of your paper, but flip it over and rub the back. Rubbing the top would make the chalk smear. When you're finished, don't forget to sign your name. Now, since we were calling this our science experiment project, I thought that it would be super fun for us to actually do a science experiment. So I saw this great experiment online where all you need are paper towels, water, and some food coloring. So I set up um, nine different cups of water because we were going to be using the primaries to make the secondaries. So for this one, we'll just say we're going to make green. So what I did with in front of the kids was I explained to them what food coloring was, how it's edible, how it's also a concentrate of the color. So it might look one way in the bottle, but it's actually concentrated, a concentrate or a really condensed packed in version of the color. So we talked about if we were gonna make green, what two colors would we use? And while they were chatting, I was just dropping the colors into the cup, which they thought was fascinating. And I explained to them how we were going to magically create green in the middle cup. So we just put a couple of drops of food coloring in each. And then with paper towel, I used Viva paper towels just because a website that I found this project on had recommended it. I just folded them up while the kids were talking and we were hypothesizing what was going to happen and just kind of folding it up like this, putting one in here. We talked about absorbency and noticed how immediately the paper towel, which is very thirsty, was absorbing or sucking up the color. Looks like I actually probably should have used a little bit more blue food coloring. And then you just bring it over and put it inside of that cup. The idea is the color will move from the paper towel into here. However, 
I did notice that it takes forever and maybe sometimes it'll climb up to a right about there and then stop. So I did this. I'm gonna put that in the yellow. So basically it's the exact same thing. I did prop them both up on CDs. This is actually my genius husband's idea using gravity so you can bring in even more science to just kind of help the paper towel along a little bit so that the color can transfer a little faster. It probably won't happen in one class period and we talked about that. So the kids knew to come to art and then following art class expecting to see that the experiment would have turned out and to see the results to see if their hypothesis was correct. So there you have it. It's a whole lot of science in one project. Thanks guys.